So I'm going to speak about San Momo, which is an R package for stochastic mortality modeling. This is a joint work between with Vladimir Kaishev, who is, who is here, and Pietro Milosevic, who presented earlier this morning. In fact, this is a spin-off of that project. And since we had to do testing of so much models, then we thought that the, the actual science community and the demographic community would benefit from the code we use for that. So we tried to make it available through, a, through an R package. So I'm going to speak about what's the motiva motivation for, for developing this package. And I'm going to speak about the a statistical framework underlying the implementation of the package. Then I'm going to go through the, what you can do with our package. And finally, I'm going to conclude. But the first question, uh, so STMOMO stands for Stochastic Mortality Modeling. But you may wonder, who is, who is MOMO? So that is MOMO. So MOMO is the king of the carnivals in several Latin American countries. And carnivals are so, mu so much fun that when they end, they end with a funeral. So that is related to, to carnivals. And, but the good thing is that this guy dies every year, but he rises again when the carnivals start in the next year. So let me talk about the motivation for developing this package. So there has been a huge development in the literature of mortality modeling, starting with Lee and Carter, and a lot of extensions of that of that model, including more bilinear components are in a cohort effect. And then we have the famous CVD models and all of their extensions. And there are many models in the literature which combine new terms, which combine features of this one or this other model or are new terms. There are also several packages for doing mortality modeling in R. The most famous one is the demography package, which implements the Lee Carter model and several of its variants. And you also have the ILC package, which implements the Lee Carter model, the Lee Carter model with cohorts, and then a Poisson uh, framework. And you have the life metrics functions, which implement some CVD extensions, the Lee Carter model. And unfortunately, the life metrics package, the life metrics functions are not a package available in CRUN, so it's rather difficult to, to use them. So let me see, let me talk about some of the limitations of existing packages. First, they are not easily expandable to include new models. So they have some predefined models. But if you want to test a new model that comes to the literature or you want to add a new term, then it's rather difficult to modify them. Also, they have limited functions for forecasting and simulation. They do not provide uh, uh, functions for testing, goodness of, testing the goodness of fit of the models, models. And they also do not allow for, for the consideration of parameter uncertainty, which is quite important when you're dealing with smaller populations. So San Momo seeks to overcome these limitations. So let me first talk. So if you want to, to install San Momo, then it is available in CRAN, which is the main repository for our packages. You can go there, download it. There is a, a paper explaining the usage of the package. You can also get it there. If you're interested in the code, it is available at GitHub. And if you want to install it, then you install it as you would install any other R package, and you will load it within R as you would load any other package. So let me describe, give you an overview of the structure of San Momo. So San Momo is based on the, the underlying framework for San Momo is the generalized Shapiro cohort family of models. I will explain, pl explain that later on. So you can define an abstract GAPC model using a, any of these functions. So there is a general function for defining any model which lies within that family. But you can also, you also have predefined functions for the more common, common stochastic mortality models. Then once you have defined the model, you have some data, you can fit it. If you have the fitted model, then you can plot the parameters. You may want to obtain the residuals and then analyze them graphically or computing BICs or AICs. Then the fitted model, you may want to forecast it. Then you might get, want to get plots of the forecasted parameter, a time index parameters. You may want to simulate them, and you may want to bootstrap and then also do simulations that consider, consider parameter uncertainty. And you may also want to see what the, para the parameters look when you consider the, 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 the uncertainty in them. So as I mentioned before, uh, the, the San Momo is based on the generalized Shapiro cohort family of models. And that is based on some recent paper, one by Andrew Hunt and, and Blake, which is a working paper where they do a literature review of the, of the mortality, of mortality, of, of the, of the mortality literature. And they, they show how you can put all, a, a lot of these models within a common framework. And there's also a very interesting paper by Curie, which appeared last year in the Scandinavian Actual Journal where they show how you can frame the models within a generalized nonlinear or linear model setting. 
So let me explain what a generalized Shapiro cohort, what the generalized Shapiro cohort model structure is. So if you have in this graph the log of mortality rate, so this is 1961. So let's see how it possible it has gone down. You see that some ages have gone down slower, some ages have gone down faster. You may also notice that there are some diagonal patterns, say this here, that move along the diagonal. So in general, when you, most of mortality models model either the log of the force of mortality of the logic of QXs, let's consider the log of the force of mortality. Then what you have is an alpha X term, which captures the general shape of that mortality. Then you have some decline, which is typically cap captured by a kappa T term. But as I said before, these declines are different by A, so you have a beta X term modulating that. And then the extensions might be you add more than one term. Then as I said before, there might be some diagonal terms, so you may add a cohort term. So this is pretty general. So based on that, ah, and also these cohort effects might vary by H, so you may add an H modulating term to the cohort effect. So if we do a parallel between GLMs or, G or generalized nonlinear models and mortality models, we can find a very general framework. So you have, as in a generalized linear model, a random component. So typically you have that the mortality is either, you, you assume that that's either Poisson or binomial, and you model either the force of mortality or one year probabilities of, of that. And you have a systematic component. So you have a predictor which describes how mortality will evolve, and that will follow what I just explained. A typical, a, a common thing is that you have two, a sort of two family of models. So you have Lee Carter type models where beta x is non-parametric, and you have to estimate it from the data, and you have CVD type models where beta x is a predefined function of age, so you don't have to estimate it from the data. And finally, you have a link function linking the random component with the systematic component. So you have that the link evaluated at the expected value of the dead traits would be equal to, would be explained by the systematic component. And you typically have a, ma a match between a log link with a Poisson distribution and a logic link with a binomial distribution as using the, the canonical links that you normally use in GLMs. But a difference with, in, 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 G in, in stochastic mortality models where they differ to most GLMs is that you have some, you need to impose some parameter constraints since the, mo since the model is not identifiable. So typically what you have is say that you have a, a set of parameters, then you, may, you can transform those parameters to obtain another set of parameters which produce the same predictor and the same dead rate. So you need to impose parameter constraints. So this, B, this new here is a way of abstractly defining that. We'll see how that works in the implementation. So in San Momo, what you have is a mapping, a function which maps each of the component to something that you input in defining a model. So you have the San Momo function where you define a an, an generalized HPU a stochastic mortality model. So that has a link. So that's telling you whether we are using a log link with a Poisson model or a logic link with a, with a binomial model. Then you want to define the predictor. So you have an static H function, which defines whether you have an alpha X or not. Then you want to define how this beta X look like. So you have a list telling the model how many period H functions you have and what is their form. Finally, you have something defining how the beta X, how the cohort effects are. So you may not have it, or it may be a one, or you may have any other given function. And then you have a constraint function which implements the constraints. That's gonna be the most difficult part of implementing a model. So let me give you some examples of how you would do that in, in San Momo. So let's consider four models. The Lee Carter model, the CVD model, the APC model, and the M7 model, which Pietro described before. So for consistency, let's assume that all the models were gonna fit them, fit them under a log Poisson setting, but it would be very, very easy to do it under a log it binomial setting. So yeah. let's give you, let, let me give you an example of how you would define the Lee Carter model. So in the Lee Carter model, you have this predictor, which mo I, I, most of you would be familiar, and you need two parameter constraints. You need, normally you impose that the sum of the beta x is equal to one, and then the sum of the kappa t is equal to zero, and that is because you can transform the parameters in this way without changing the, the, the predicted dead rate, right? And typically, you, you set these constraints by, set, by choosing c1 to be the average of the kappa t's, and you choose, and you, and you, and you, and you impose this constraint by setting c2 equal to the sum of the beta x's. So let's see how you would do that in San Momo. So let's forget about this part. 
Let's go to the bottom part. So the Lee Carter model, you, and we're using a link, a logit link. It does, it does have a, a static H function. Your period H function is non-parametric, so it's only a one period H function and it's non-parametric, and the constraints are gonna be defined through this constraint function, which is basically set, set, telling you how to compute C1, the mean of the kappa t's, C2, the sum of the beta x's, and then you are applying this transformation which imposes that. Let's go to another example. So you may want to, to, to define a CVD model. In a CVD model, you have two kappa terms, and in this case, you have two predefined functions of age modulating the, 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 the period functions, and you don't need constraints. So if you were to define that, it's pretty straightforward. You define F2, which is how you are modulating the second period term, so it would be x minus the mean of the ages, and then if you were to define it, you say you have a, lo a logit link, it doesn't have a, an alpha x, so this is false, and then you have two period edge functions, so a one for this kappa t1, and f2, which defines this x minus x bar. So given that, you now could fit them, but, but since there are many models which are, which are fairly commonly, which are widely used, then there are predefined functions for defining them, so you could define the Lee Carter model alternative by just using the LC function, the CVD model using the CVD function, the APC model, Using the, and M7 using the equivalent functions. So you would get that definition within R. So now you have defined an abstract object, which is a, a stochastic mortality model. Now you want to fit it to data. So to do that, as an example, San Momo has data for the UK. So it has some deaths, some, some exposures, and then it corresponds to ages going from zero to 100. That's some sample data. And it has data from 1961 to 2011. So your data typically looks like an array where you have on the rows the ages and on the columns you have the years. So given that, you can fit it fairly easy. So say we want to fit it just to ages 55 to 89, since some of these models have been developed for older ages. So we will just go fit. I have defined a Lee Carter model using this depth, this exposure that correspond to certain ages, certain years, and I want to fit it to a subset of those ages. And you could do that to any of the, for any of the, three of the, of the models you've defined. Then you can plot the parameters, so you get a plot of the parameters of the Lee Carter using just the plot function. So here you see the typical behavior. You have a strain light of the alpha x because it's older ages. Then you see the decline of mortality captured by kappa t, and you see the modulating beta x showing that mortality has de been declining faster around age 60. So an uh, important step when using a stochastic mortality models is to analyze their goodness of fit, and a typical way of doing that is by analyzing the residuals. You can estimate the residuals by using just the, re the function residuals applied to the fitted model. So you get your residuals and you can plot them. So if you plot them, you get these widely used heat maps and then you see, say, for instance, the Lee Carter model for the UK population is not very good because you have these diagonal patterns, the same with the CVD. For the APC, you don't see the diag diagonal patterns, but you see some concentration. By contrast, for the M7 model, you see that it has a quite good fit to data. And then, once you have chosen a model that is reasonable, you may want to forecast it. So in San Momo, we make the, the common assumption. So we, we assume that the kappa t's follow a multivariate random walk with drift. And for the cohort effects, you can choose any IMA model you, 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 you want or that your statistical analysis show that is reasonable. So there are two models in this case that have a cohort effect. So let's assume that for the APC model, a group model is an IMA 1-1 and for the M7 and ARIMA 200. So if you want to do forecast, you just use the function forecast in your fitted model for how many years you want it. So in this case, you don't need to specify anymore for the Lee Carter or CVD because they don't have a cohort effect. If you have a cohort effect, then you need to specify the order of the ARIMA model you want to use. So given that, you have forecasted it, and then you can plot to see what the results look like. So see, for instance, for the M7 model, you have your forecast of the three kappa terms using a random work with drift, and then you have your forecast of the gamma using a, an AR1, an, 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 an AR order two. You would, also, you would also like to do simulations to do things like what Professor Lee described this morning, that you want to get trajectories to analyze, say, what could happen with mortality rates or with annuity values given certain trajectories. So to do that, you something pretty similar to the forecast function, but you just now use the simulate function. You tell, the mo you, you tell us what, how many simulations you want, for what horizon, and in the case that there is a cohort effect, what is the specification of the cohort model. So given that, you can pretty easily obtain, uh, obtain 
trajectories. This is similar to what Professor Lee showed this morning. And then it's also very important to typically to analyze how the distribution of this, of mortality rates look like, and that's quite useful to distinguish between a good and a bad model. So here you can get a plot, say, of a fan chart of the kappa t's. You can use that to, 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 obtain, to, to obtain fan charts of the, of the mortality rates, and here you can see that mo some models are more plausible than others. You see that this might be rather narrow for an eight for, for H85, which contrasts with, with what you get with model M7, which, which forecasts bigger uncertainty. Finally, you may want to, 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 to analyze, to, to implement some bootstrapping technique to take into account parameter uncertainty. So in San Momo, there are two, semi two, two bootstrapping techniques. The semi-parametric uh, bootstrapping developed by Browns and co-authors, including Michel, and the residual bootstrapping implemented by Coisy and co-authors. So you will just do bootstrap of my fitted model, how many bootstrap samples I want, which, which of the two methods I want to use, and then you can plot the results and see what the uncertainty looks like. In this case, since this is UK data, which has around, uh, in the whole population, like six, 60 million, then parameter uncertainty is not that big, but if you had a smaller population, say New Zealand, then it would become more important in your forecast. So let me conclude. So we have used the framework of GLMs to define a general family of stochastic mortality models, and that has allowed us to, to develop a quite general uh, package for, for mortality model, and that, that package includes tools for fitting models, analyzing the goodness of fit, doing projection and simulation, doing bootstrap, analyze, do, uh, uh, study parameter uncertainty via bootstrapping techniques, and we believe that this package is fairly easy to use, and it allows you to implement a wide range of models, and implement new models, so we think that this might be a useful, a, a, good for, a useful addition to the toolkit that actuaries have for longevity risk management, and also for, for academics teaching students, and they could, they could get hands-on using some of the models without going through the pay, painful process or, of implementing all the fitting of the, of the model. And finally, there are some work that we are planning to do with, with the package and first is there is a limitation is that we have some predefined time series model for the parameters. So we are looking at uh, at implementing new forecasting forecast, forecasting models for the time index. There is uh, 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 the possibility of having beta x being a parametric function, but where you have some parameters that need to be estimated. So if you if you've seen the generalized the general procedure that Andrew Horn and David Blake have. Have, 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 have published in, in the North, North American Actuarial Journal. Andrew is working on developing a package which allows for that. Then there, is, there can be uh, plenty of extensions considering multi-population models. And with Anastasios, Anastasios Bar, I, I don't remember his surname, from U, UK11, we are developing a Chinese web application that would allow people to go there and play with different models without having to program in our and that might be quite useful to, to get people aware about how these models can be used. So thank you. If you are interested, please go to Cran, install the package, and do, do write to me if you find bugs or problems with the, with the, with the package or you have ideas of what else could be, would be interesting for you. And yeah, feel free to write to me, and I, I'm open to, to answer questions you, you have. Did you find any big differences in the result of, between the Poisson distribution and the binomial distribution? I, it's not something that I have looked at specifically. We're just providing the tools. So it'd be very easy for you to test that if, if you have the, the, the package. But what I've seen that in general, you don't see very, very big difference. Unless, unless you have very few data, then you might, might start seeing, seeing the differences. But, but it's most, it's, to me, it's most a matter of what data is available to you. If you have central exposure, then you might be more, more, more uh, tendency to use a log model. But if you have initial exposure, then it might be reasonable to use a, 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 a logit binomial model. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't maybe know the Wolfram, the Mathematica software, they have Wolfram website. They provide the very uh, friendly users uh, uh, framework for, for different users. May, you may 
can contact them for that. Maybe they can use your software to implement in the in the Wolfram website. Okay, that's so a very good suggestion. I, I will look into that. Do they do they include like things written in any so in any software, or do they include MATLAB code or? They include. I think it's easy to convert different code to their mathematical code. Okay, and I'll and they I'll have yeah. actually very powerful like life studies, survival studies already. I think yours will be a very big contribution to them as well. Okay, thank you, Adam. Yeah, so just to make the link with my talk, um, out of those models, uh, what I see is the only one that would uh, uh, increase life expectancy linearly as a scenario is the APC model with or without the uh, gamma. Uh, but perhaps it could be the difficulty with the, all these uh, set of models is that you have kappa times beta, so you separate time from age. This is due to the SVD uh, sort of approach in initially for the Descartes Carter model. Um, could you, uh, in the program, have something else than kappa t times beta? Uh, so I see two ways to do it. Either uh, you make the beta change over time, okay. but then that's uh, be difficult to model, but that would be one solution. Or another one would be to have kappa 1, beta 1, plus kappa 2, beta 2. Uh, and we see it's a sort of transition from the first beta to the second one over time. Okay, you, the, the second situation you, 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 you explain it will be implementable. Oh, great. In fact, all the list you showed in, in your talk at the start, all of them would be very easy to implement in San Momo. Most of them have predefined functions, but if not, then through the, the general function you could implement them. The only challenge typically is only defining the constraint function, which is the, mm -hmm. the, normally the hard part. Uh, with your package, is it possible to have some AIC or BIC coefficient to compare models? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually pretty easy. I didn't include it here, but it's on the, on the, on the vignette. That's how you call the, the papers underlying uh, San Momo packages. So you would just go to, if you have your, say your fitted model, then if you just type AIC LC fit, you get the AIC immediately. And BIC LC fit, you get your BIC immediately. So it's pretty easy to compare. Thank you.